Hello, it's Paul Benedict here with the Benedict Group at Keller Williams Realty Las Vegas. I've missed you over the past few weeks. Um, the market has been so busy, I've not had time to do my weekly updates, but here I am. It's Tuesday, August 12th, and I'm here to give you a recap of July's numbers. So I have not been here every week in July. My apologies, but let's recap July's numbers and talk about where the market has been and where we think it's going to go in the current state of things uh, post-COVID. Let's dive into this. It's very, very exciting. Las Vegas always um, has something fun up its sleeve and it never disappoints. All right. Let's first look at sales volume by month. Let me draw your attention over here to May's numbers. So COVID happened uh, and lockdown was enacted mid-March. So the number of closings in April and May suffered tremendously when the world shut down. But then when you know, phase two happened in Nevada. Sisolak allowed most of the businesses to reopen, right? People started buying houses again and they realized, hey, the sky is not falling. So June's <laughs> closing numbers were significantly higher than the depression we saw after lockdown. And check out July. Wow. 3,903 units closed in July. I mean, if you look to the left here, that is above last July. So what's the percentage above? If we check out the closings, 39.03 in July, that's 3% more from July last year. Last July, we had fewer closings than this July. Now, that might be a result of uh, pent-up demand from the lockdown. It might be a result of the low interest rates. It might be a result of, a actu of an actual good economy here in Las Vegas and Nevada. It might be a result of Californians moving here, a combination of, of the three. Or if you um, believe it's a result of other factors, please comment below Let's discuss this and find out why so many houses are selling in Vegas and why the sky is not falling. So that's excellent news there. Out of those 3,903 that closed, let's check out the, distri the, the, the distressed property mix here. So I like to report how many REOs are selling, uh, otherwise known as bank-owned properties that are selling to end users, and how many short sales are selling. Now, check out this number. 35 bank-owned houses sold last month. 15 short sales in all of Las Vegas. We have a population of well over 2 million. Less than 1% bank owned, less than 1% short sale, over 99% non-distressed. Guys, there is no indication of any foreclosure wave coming. And yes, some people are telling me that they believe, oh, so many people can't make their payments and they're being deferred and uh, the forbearances that the mortgage companies are offering are going to end. Well, when they end and if the person still can't pay their mortgage, why wouldn't they just sell their house? You know, we have so much equity in most properties here in Vegas. There are very few that are upside down anymore based on the massive um, appreciation we've seen over the past multiple years. So I don't see a wave of foreclosures coming. If you do, tell me what the evidence is and let's talk about it. I'd love to know. All right, moving along. How many houses are listed on the MLS currently? 6,683. So last month, same time, there were slightly more, and in May, more than that. So we have a declining in inventory. Now, that lends itself to a seller's market. So decreased inventory usually means higher demand and prices going up. So we are in a seller's market. Um, some of the consensus in my office about why that might be is some sellers are still concerned that they, and they don't want people in their houses. That some sellers that would be selling their home and putting it on the market are holding off, waiting for a vaccine, waiting for more safety precautions, something. They're hesitant to, to show their house to buyers and thus not listing and resulting in a potentially lower inventory. Absorption. So if we take the number of houses that sold last month and divide it into how many are available, 1.7 months. Wow. So May, <laughs> May showed us the um, epitome of the lockdown. Four months of available inventory, then when people started buying houses again, the number dropped to 2.4 months of inventory, and now people are buying like gangbusters. Buyers are very, very active, so we have 1.7 months of available houses. That's a strong seller's market there. Median sales price. I just absolutely am in awe of this number. I do not want this number to get too much higher because we've already eclipsed the national median home price, but as of the end of July... Now, this is hard data. This, there's no opinion in this. This is just multiple listing service data. Every house that's sold with a realtor indicates a $332,000 median sales price for detached single-family homes in Las Vegas. Detached houses only. So how does that compare with last year? So if we check out the $332,000 price, that's up 9% from July last year. So a 9% increase year over year. Wow. 
let me explain here. If we take all property types, so as you heard me mention just a moment ago, that number of 332, that's for detached houses only, not including townhouses and condos. If we include all properties, manufactured homes, attached products, patio homes, duplexes, triplexes, we arrive at a median price in Las Vegas of 309. And that as well is up 9% from last July. This is the number that we use to compare our market with the national median home price. And according to the National Association of Realtors, Median home price in America is 284. So we are quite a bit above that. Now, we don't want to go quite a bit above that because the farther we move away from this national median home price, the less affordable our market appears to be to prospective buyers who are moving here from out of state, out of town. All right, let's continue on here. New construction. As of June, that's the most recent data we have, we have a median price of 382. Now keep in mind that the new home builders have ways to massage these numbers uh, with incentives. So the closing prices are the actual legally reported sales price of the property, but we are not aware of, and we can speculate, um, how many incentives, how much money towards closing costs, how many free upgrades, wave lot premiums, things like that the builders are doing to sweeten the deals for buyers to keep the prices bolstered and appreciating. Out of all the properties that sold last month, we're sitting at about a 17% cash buyer percentage. So you see when lockdown happened, a lot of the investors in our market pulled out 13%. You see the drop there in April. Then May, June, July all increased with cash buyers. So investors and um, other cash buyers are regaining their confidence in our market and buying properties again. So 17% of all sales were cash buyers. So. That's the update for this week. Now that's recapping the entire month of July. I will see you, if not next week, the week after. Now the market's busy. I'm out selling, showing houses, meeting with sellers. I'm blessed to have a vibrant business. And if you are interested in speaking with me about your home, buying a house, I would love to chat with you. Let me put my 16 years of experience together for you. Paul Benedict with The Benedict Group at Keller Williams Realty Las Vegas. We're on the northwest corner of Sahara and Fort Apache. Thanks for watching. See you next time.